how does HTTPS work? I'm planning on releasing a couple of new videos on securing microservices with HTTPS and also about how you can use Kubernetes to automatically obtain the TLS certificates required for HTTPS. And for that, I think it makes sense if everyone understands how HTTPS works. This video won't get too technical. I've simplified a couple of concepts, so it will fit in a shorter video. So after the end of this, you might not be able to implement all the required algorithms from scratch, but you should be able to understand how the common tools that are out there, what they do, and how you can use them to implement HTTPS um, protection for your microservices. Oftentimes I've experienced that developers treat this whole HTTPS communication thing as that sort of black box they don't even want to try to understand because it sounds so complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. And I'd like to show you just how it works with this video. So let's start with a couple of prerequisites. Whenever you hear HTTPS and there's cryptography involved, it almost sounds very complex and very mathematical, but it doesn't really have to be complex at all. You just need to trust that public key cryptography and signature works. Now, if you're saying, what is public key cryptography and signature? It's basically a couple of very simple mathematic functions that only work in one way or that are much easier to compute in one way than in another way. But you should trust these two principles. You should trust that any message that has been encrypted with Bob's public key, and Bob's public key is public, it's out there for everyone, can only be decrypted with Bob's private key. So basically that means only Bob, because he's the only owner of his private key, can decrypt this message, even though it can be publicly distributed and everyone can listen to it, but no one can do anything with it because they just see some random bytes. So that was the public key cryptography part. And then there's also the signature part. So anyone who has access to Alice's public key can verify that a message could only have been created by someone with access to Alice's private key. So basically this means anyone on the internet, even though they don't know Alice's private key, only Alice knows her private key, can verify that a message was actually sent by Alice. And in the background, there's basically just a bit of multiplication and modulus calculation going on, but you don't have to worry about that at all. Just take this as given. Based on this, we can now start with your browser. And let's say you want to access youtube.com. So the first thing your browser does, it tells the internet, give me youtube.com. This is of course very simplified. In the background, there'll be DNS requests going on. So you can resolve that name to an IP address and then it will be routed through many, many computers until it eventually ends up there. But in essence, your computer says, give me youtube.com. YouTube will then respond saying, hey, sure, here's my certificate. This certificate contains my public key. And by the way, this certificate was signed by the Google Certificate Authority. Your browser then says, ah, cool. I know and I trust Google. And I also know Google CA's public key. So I will verify whether this certificate was really signed by the Google Certificate Authority. Since we assume everything is fine, there's no attack going on, your browser then says, hey, youtube.com, I trust the Google Certificate Authority, and it looks like you are indeed who you say you are. Because I trust you, I have created a new secret key and I have encrypted this key with your public key. So remember, if you encrypt something with a public key, only the owner of a private key can encrypt it. So youtube.com then says, hey browser, smart choice. Only I have my private key, so only I can decrypt this. So now I have this new secret that you just randomly created as well. So then both parties realize we're the only two machines on the entire internet who know this new secret key. So from now on, let's encrypt all of our communication with this new key. So based on the principles that we've trusted before, we have now created a secure communication channel between your browser and the server, in this case, youtube.com even though the entire communication was public. Someone could have listened in on this entire communication happening and they wouldn't be any wiser because all a potential attacker would have seen was a message that was encrypted with YouTube's public key. And since the attacker wouldn't have YouTube's private key, they couldn't do anything with it. So on the previous slide, there was a certificate authority involved. But basically, what is a certificate authority and how is our certificate signed? So far, we've only shown that we can communicate in an encrypted fashion, even though the communication channel itself might not be protected. Everyone could listen on it. 
we haven't really talked about how you make sure that the party you're talking to is actually who they claim they are. And this is where the certificate authority comes in. So remember, we had a certificate that was signed by the Google Certificate Authority, but how do you get such a certificate? How is it signed? This time, let's start with the YouTube.com web server. Now imagine this is before the YouTube.com web server uses HTTPS. So we want to secure this web server with HTTPS, but we don't have anything along those lines yet. Also, there is the Google Certificate Authority, which is considered a trusted certificate authority on the internet. As any party involved in public key cryptography, the Google Certificate Authority has a private key and a public key. Now, if the web server running YouTube.com also wants to take part in HTTPS encrypted communication, they also have to create such a new key pair and everyone can create a key pair. Next up, a person or a machine running this YouTube.com web server creates a so-called certificate signing request. So this is a request that the YouTube.com web server creates, which is made from their key pair. And basically it requests the known authority to sign this certificate. So the YouTube.com web server says, hey, I've decided I wanna use HTTPS from now on. I've created a certificate signing request with my key pair. Google Certificate Authority, can you please sign it? Then the Google Certificate Authority says, sure, I've signed your request with my private key. Anyone who has my public key can verify that it was actually me who signed this. Now, most browsers, when they are delivered, already have a list of trusted certificates. And these certificates are issued by known certificate authorities. Google is one of them, and YouTube uses the Google one because YouTube belongs to Google or belongs to Alphabet. And they have their own authority, but smaller companies like the company you work at might not have their own certificate authority. So there are also standalone certificate authorities on the internet that you can ask to sign your certificate signing request. The important thing is that you choose one that most browsers trust by default because now this browser when it comes into contact with this newly created youtube.com web server even though youtube.com might not have existed when the browser was created it can now verify that this public key which claims to be signed by google was actually signed by google because it knows google's public key from their certificate and can now reliably determine that the information in this certificate that youtube.com provided is true as long as we trust the Google Certificate Authority. So that also means the public key that is in there that we will use in HTTPS to encrypt a new secret that we can then use for symmetric encryption does belong to YouTube.com, at least if we trust the Google Certificate Authority. And this trusted certificate authority is a good way to prevent a man in the middle attack, for example, where an attacker could otherwise pretend to be YouTube.com using their own key pair. And then you would think you're talking to YouTube, but you're actually talking to, to the attacker. However, that won't work because the attacker won't get their certificate signed by the Google Certificate Authority. So what is a self-signed certificate? Sometimes it might not be necessary to have a well-known authority such as the Google Certificate Authority sign your request. Let's imagine you have your own app and it's currently deployed to your staging environment where you wanna do some testing. So if you say, I now also want to encrypt all the communication with this app, you have to create a private key and a public key. So the next step would now be to create a signing request. But who will sign this if there's no certificate authority? So in this case, you can create a second pair of keys. And basically by having this set of keys, you've just created your very own certificate authority. You can now do the same stuff as before. You create your certificate signing request and send it to the certificate authority. The authority will make sure that you actually have access to this URL that you're claiming and say, hey, here's your certificate. It was signed by me. And again, anyone who has my public key can verify that it was signed by me. So instead of a browser, this time your second app comes along and says, hey, I wanna interact with the first app that we just deployed to the staging environment. It realizes that your app wants to use HTTPS, so it looks at the certificate and finds a public key in there. This certificate now says, I was signed by whatever we called our own certificate authority. And then of course your second app says, this is not a trusted authority. I will not trust this certificate. However, because all of this is in your controlled environment and you do trust the certificate authority that you've just created, you can now tell your second app, hey, if you trust the certificate, 
that I point to this certificate authority that contains this public key, then you can use that to validate the public key from my first app that we deployed to staging. And then your second app will say, oh yeah, that matches. As long as we trust this certificate authority, we can use HTTPS here. So the process is really the same as with a certificate that was signed by a known authority, but that is effort and there might be limits or there might be cost involved. So if you don't intend your app to be used by end users that have browsers that only trust specific certificate authorities, then you can use a self-signed certificate at the cost of having to tell the user, yes, you need to trust this. And this is very common in testing environments. So in conclusion, HTTPS communication is not that difficult and really everyone should implement it. I'm planning on releasing a couple of videos next in which I'll show you how you can self-sign your own certificates so you can use HTTPS for testing. And also then later up, we'll show a video on how to automate all of this process with Kubernetes, both using your own certificate authority and also a trusted certificate authority like Let's Encrypt. If you don't wanna miss those upcoming videos, subscribe now or leave a comment with your feedback for this video.